What is up, fanatics, fan guy addicts? It's your boy Josh Fan Guy coming to you from beautiful Katy, Texas, on this nice chilly day. I'm certainly glad the weather's chilling out a little for us. Today uh, is our Friday edition, so we're going to be doing some in-depth analysis of our DraftKings picks for the week. Uh, if you watched yesterday's episode, I was pretty high on Dalvin Cook this week. I did have him in two of my three lineups that I played Thursday through Monday, and uh, that was an absolute banger of a pick so far. He had a very good day, so we're off to a good start in terms of our advice this week. Uh, again, I'm going to recap what I had done yesterday and let you know my favorite plays for the week. I actually discovered a few new plays that I like uh, that we'll be you know, updating you on. And we're going to go through all the different matchups for Week 8 of, of DraftKings this year. So uh, without further ado, because this video usually turns out to be pretty long, and we're going to try to, you know, we're trying to shorten them all. So we're definitely going to try to, um, you know, uh, move through it as quick as we can. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to be filling out this, uh, this pylon entry as we go through. And so without further ado, let's get started with quarterbacks. Uh, top uh, value quarterback of the week is Russell Wilson, 7,200 at Atlanta. How can you not like this matchup? There's a very good reason he's the most expensive quarterback of the week. He's playing against Atlanta, who's atrocious. My worry is that if Matt Ryan does not play, because as you can see, Matt Ryan's questionable. We did just get our injury Friday injury report, which is what I was waiting for. Um, he did practice today. And... Um, they said they're going to make a decision tomorrow whether or not he's actually going to play. So we will have some clarity, you know, before game time. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have full clarity of this. But Matt Ryan playing actually is going to affect how Russell Wilson does. And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, Russell Wilson should light up Atlanta for at least two touchdowns, at least two. The problem is if they pull an early lead, of, you know, get a, get a touchdown and a field goal, they might just start leaning on Chris Carson and just pounding the rock uh, into Atlanta's face. So my, you know, I love Russell Wilson this week. I think he's a fine play. But my problem is his price tag at seventy two hundred, and because really a lot of the running backs and receivers we like a lot are very expensive, um, it's tough to it's going to be tough to get Wilson in a ton of our lineups. But he's a good play. Uh, Deshaun Watson at home against Oakland. I mean, I like this matchup too. Uh, I just don't like the price tag again. Same thing with Russell Wilson. Uh, I definitely think Houston is going to be a little bit more likely to throw the ball a ton. They're not, they usually don't just sit back on the run. So, uh, you know, Watson has a lot of upside in this game against the uh, Oakland secondary that just allowed Aaron Rodgers to torch him for six touchdowns last week. So, um, you know, normally Oakland's a pretty well-coached team with Gruden in there. Uh, you know, he's a pretty good defensive-minded coach. But, uh, you know, I like Watson's upside this week at 7,100. I just don't like the price tag again. Jared Goff at 6,800. Jared Goff this week is my... Uh, he's actually not my top play of the week, but I do like golf. Golf is definitely one of my top three plays of the week. He's 6,800, which is a little less than Wilson and Watson, but really they have golf priced pretty high considering what his production has been this year. But I can't get away from this matchup. He's playing against Cincinnati, the worst team in the league uh, to the past. Interesting to note about that, though, they're very tough against number one receivers. Uh, they shut down number one receivers. The problem with with the Rams is I don't really know who their number one receiver is. Like you would think statistically it's Cooper cup, but cups their slot guy. So they're going to be shutting down cooks or woods or Gurley. I mean, uh, like uh, Cincinnati typically keys in on somebody and is able to shut them down. But the rest of the offense flourishes for this reason. I love Jared Goff this week. Cause he's got a lot of options. Um, he had a little bit of a turnaround last week from his abysmal week before, which we did call still only 25 points. Golf is a little still expensive for my taste. However, I do like the value you're getting with him. I think he's going to have a great day against a bad defense. Tom Brady at home against Cleveland. This just feels like a Brady game for me. Um, I haven't actually had him on the, my list of likes yet this year, but I do like Brady this week uh, because it just it's not because of anything on paper or anything like that. I just really like the match. I just feel like they're going to throw the ball in this one and, and they're going to light up Cleveland. Um, and Cleveland might even be able to kind of keep in there. I don't know. Cleveland's look terrible. Uh, so again, I don't like Brady at his price tag. 6,600 is still a little stiff, but for some reason, I just, when you look at the matchups, he's surrounded by players that have much better technical matchups. This just, my gut and my heart just tells me it's a Brady week. 
Uh, he's only 100 more than Josh Allen, in fact. And I love Josh Allen this week. Josh Allen is on my love list of top five quarterbacks. He gets Philly. Everybody's been torching Philly in terms of passing the ball, uh, which means I like John Brown a little a lot this week. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, but yeah, I do. I like I like Josh Allen this week. I think he's going to get it done with his legs. I think he's going to get it done with his arm. And I think they beat Philly at home. So, uh, you know, I like Josh Allen. I think Josh Allen is a great play this week at 6,500. Drew, Drusif Breeze. Um, he's questionable. And he's actually has been practicing uh, this week. Issue here is we don't know if he's going to play. However, if he does play... Fire Breeze up, man. He's playing against Arizona. Terrible pass defense. And Breeze will light them the fuck up in his first game back. Love Breeze this week if he plays. But that's a big if. They've already said it's a game time decision. So beware of that. That's something you're going to have to. If you want to insert Breeze into some lineups, wait till Sunday morning to do it or switch them around because we don't know if Breeze is playing. Next, Kyler Murray at New Orleans. I think Kyler Murray is going to have a bad day, man. New Orleans defense is nothing to trifle with, even though they're technically ranked third to last in the league against the pass, which I find surprising because their defense has been pretty freaking lights out. Um, Kylo Murray has also been very, he's a rookie, man. He's not, he's still a rookie. Like he's not really good against uh, solid defenses and the, the Saints are going to challenge him. So I do not like Kyler Murray this week. Though, especially because David Johnson probably won't play. Um, and Chase Edmonds is not going to be able to do to the Saints what he did to the, to the Giants. That's a fact. The, the Saints, uh, for all their flaws in the pass defense, are very stout against the run. Uh, Matthew Stafford. I love Stafford this week. I cannot not love Stafford this week. Matter of fact, on Johnson going down last week was probably the best thing that could have happened to Matthew Stafford's fantasy outlook for the rest of the year. Uh, Detroit is now going to become a passing team instead of a running team. They don't have a choice. Uh, their, their, their next running backs were not nearly as good as on. So um, Stafford should be able to light up the Giants at home this week. I love Matthew Stafford at 6,100 this week. I think he's going to turn up the same kind of volume that you get from the guys at the top of the list. Uh, you know, for 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 a thousand cheaper, Matt Ryan is super questionable this week, and based on what we saw last week, and based on the fact he's playing against Seattle, I'm not a big Matt Ryan fan this week. I would I'm going to fade Ryan this week, um, simply because not only the matchup but also his health. I just don't know how he's going to do. They still have Teddy Bridgewater super high. Obviously, um, you can consider playing him if Breeze doesn't go, uh, but I just. Yeah, I mean, even his best game this year, which was only like one game, was 31 points. And his next highest after that wasn't even 20. So he has not cr crossed the 20-point threshold except for one time this year. For me, that means no go. I don't want to take a quarterback if I don't believe he can score more than 20 points. Uh, moving on down to Jameis Winston. Uh, Jameis Winston's real hit or miss for me this year if you're following the show. Some weeks I love him, some weeks I don't. This week, I'm on the fence. I could see him blowing up this week, like on just kind of a hunch. But he is playing against Tennessee that has a pretty pretty good defense. He's also prone to turning the ball over a ton. When you look at his game log this year, oh, buddy, it's all over the place. Um, overall, I don't trust Winston this week. But I wouldn't call you dumb or an idiot if you decided to play <sighs> Excuse me. Daniel Jones at Detroit. Uh, just no. I like Danny Dimes, man. I actually thought Danny Dimes was going to be really good after his first game. I was a believer in him then. And uh, he did good that game that I believed in him. Yeah, that was his 40-point week. And since then, 14, 11, 8, 13, he's not, not looking as good. Um, not even close. So he's taking a step back big time. He, uh, yeah, no, just no. I'm not messing with with, uh, with Daniel Jones this week. Garoppolo. Okay, for having an undefeated team at your back, this guy's a, a fantasy nightmare. His best game is 23 points. His second best game is 14 points. How, what, how can you trust, why would they ever put Garoppolo at 5,700 ahead of guys like Brissett and Wentz? Don't get me wrong, Wentz has been hot garbage lately. But he has, you know, uh, 
uh, wants you to do four games over 15 points, which is cannot be the same for Garoppolo. So I don't know what kind of algorithm they use to figure out these prices. Uh, and I don't like Carson Wentz this week. Spoiler alert, as I'm getting to right now. But um, just the fact that they priced Gar Garoppolo ahead of him just wows me. Uh, now, Brissett, man. Brissett is another guy who's kind of middle of the road. He hasn't had too many really bad weeks or really good weeks. He, he obviously had a good week last week, which we called here on the Ultimate Fan Guy. I'm not feeling that comfortable with Brissett this week. I feel like it's going to be more of a Marlon Mack week for the Colts, and therefore I feel like Brissett loses some of, a, some of his, his stuff this week against a very good Denver secondary. Uh, Sam Darnold, not a fan of. Uh, till he shows me what he can do. Now, Jacksonville is without Jalen Ramsey and, you know, the whole seeing ghost things last week. So I feel like Darnold might have a chip on his shoulder. But I actually think it's going to be more of a Le'Veon Bell kind of day. Gardner Minshew, Minshew Mania, not a fan of him this week. Uh, the Jets actually have an underrated defense, and, and Minshew really has only put above 20 points twice this year. So, again, when we're aiming to win these contests, you really need a juicy matchup. If you're going to take a chance on a guy who hasn't put up the, the spectacular numbers. And Minshew hasn't done that. So, um, you know, Phillip Rivers against Chicago. Well, we saw Bridgewater do okay against them last week. Phillip Rivers had an okay day, I believe, against the um, Titans. But, no, it was still only 24 points. And a lot of that was a couple of Eckler yard-after-catch things. So no, I don't like I don't like Rivers in Chicago against Chicago. Kyle Allen, just stop. If you're playing Kyle Allen, oh man, I hate just being like this, but you're a moron. Why would you play Kyle Allen? It's just stupid. What are you what are you thinking? He's playing against San Francisco and he's not a very good quarterback. Looking at his numbers for the year, because I haven't, so I might be talking shit without even knowing what I'm talking about. But no, I know what I'm talking about. He, yeah, no. He has one game over twenty points. Um the rest of his games are all unimpressive. Just no. No, no, no. Tannehill. Okay, man. Here's where stuff gets a little weird. I actually... I think Tannehill could do something this week. Uh, he's not at the top of my list, but if you're looking for a very cheap quarterback that can get the job done, it's going to be him or Derek Carr. Just flat out. He looked way better than Mariota. Um, he looked pretty good, man. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you, if you want to take a flyer on Tannehill on a lineup this week where you need a cheap quarterback, I can get behind that. I think he's going to turn Corey Davis into a very relevant uh, fantasy player again. So that's good for Corey Davis's value. And, uh, you know, it's good for the Tennessee Titans. And it might be good for Tannehill. They have a really good matchup this week at home against Tampa Bay. Uh, though, worth noting, they still might lean on Derrick Henry, so. Who knows? Uh, Andy Dalton, no. Um, especially against the Rams. Baker against New England, no freaking way. Trubisky, no, he's terrible. Barkley, terrible. Flacco, terrible. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so realistically, the lowest we're going to go on this week's list of quarterbacks, I mean, you can make an argument for trying... Tannehill, but really above that, we're going all the way up to Stafford at 6,100. So you can pretty much bet that most of my quarterbacks are, are going to be Matthew Stafford, Josh Allen. I'll probably have a Tom Brady and a Jared Goff, maybe with a Watt. I like all the expensive quarterbacks this week. It's not always like that, but this week it is like that. So, um, And because there's so many expensive running backs and receivers that I kind of like, uh, I'm going to stick to the cheaper ones. So you can bet that most of my quarterback play this week is going to be Matthew Stafford and Josh Allen uh, with probably a lot of Stafford. Going on to running backs. Christian McCaffrey, 9,200. Just shoot me in the fucking leg. Here's my problem with this. I don't like McCaffrey this week because they're playing against San Francisco. I understand McCaffrey's volume, but if there's ever a week I would say – don't play Christian McCaffrey. It's this week. They're playing at San Francisco against a very good run defense, the second best in the league, in fact. And while I do think McCaffrey's volume is always going to keep him relevant when you look at his fantasy totals, I'm expecting more of a 20-point day 
than a 30, 40 point day like he's had, you know, like he's done. Um, maybe even less. Actually, my prediction for him is like 16 points, like 15 or 16 points. When you're looking at a price tag of 9,200, just no. Um, Saquon at Detroit. Again, I like Saquon this week. I just don't like his price tag. 8,900 is a lot, man. It's a lot. It's a whole, 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 whole lot. And when you take a guy who has who's that expensive, you have got to make dramatic cuts elsewhere. And I'm generally not willing to do that on DraftKings, which is why, um, I don't know, I have success. I have a lot of success. So I think my strategy is right. Uh, you can just kind of find some value picks, like some real good value picks if you're going to take a player that, that, that's that expensive. And my problem with that this week is I don't have a lot of value picks this week. I think I only have like one or two that are even below 5,000. And that's, I think, only one that's below 5,000 this week in any position that I want to take. So, you know, outside of defense, obviously. Tough to take a guy that expensive. Fournette against the Jets. I love Fournette's volume. Matter of fact, I like him just as much as I like Barkley and McCaffrey this week. And he comes at a fraction of the price. He's only 7,800, which, in my opinion, is still too expensive. But if you're going to be inclined to play Barkley or McCaffrey, you might as well just suck it up and play Fournette instead. Save yourself a thousand plus uh, budget and be able to have something uh, a little extra to spread around. Camara's status this week is huge. Um, not really. My problem with Camara this week is, is his injury from last week. Don't really know what is going to happen with him. If he goes, he's going to be a great play against Arizona. Um, they're going to dump the ball off to him a lot, particularly if Breeze doesn't play. I think Kamara has a, even a bigger day than if Breeze does play, as weird as that sounds. I feel like if Breeze plays, it's going to be definitely more of a Michael Thomas, Ted Ginn kind of day. Uh, and Kamara is so questionable that the Latavius Murray might cut into a bunch of his workload anyway. So for that reason, I'm fading Kamara this week. Todd Gurley is one of my favorite running backs this week. Uh, I like him a lot, and I think he's going to have a big day against Cincinnati. Um, I think he'll have his – I want to make sure I'm not way out of line for saying this. I think he'll have just as big a day as he did against Tampa Bay. I believe that. Uh, I think he's going to have a 20-plus point day, mid-20s to high-30s. I think he scores at least once, probably twice against a just terrible Bengals defense. Um, you know, I'm, I'm flirting with him in golf, but Cincinnati tends to be better against the pass than the run. So, uh, you know, if I'm going to – I think I'll have more stocks of Gurley this week than I will of golf. Worth noting, his price tag is 7400 So I think DraftKings has him priced fairly because I do think he's going to have a bomb week. 7400 is still a ton. Uh, moving on to Chris Carson at Atlanta, 7000 Carson is a fine play this week, particularly if Seattle pulls an early lead and decides to lean on him. Rashad Penny is finally fully healthy, so that is something worth monitoring. Chris Carson is not on my top list of plays this week, simply because I think his price tag of 7000 does not correlate with the value he should return this week. Uh, I, I, I just, I, I just got to see more, man. And Carson's been pretty good this year. Um, I love seeing all the 20-plus opportunities. He's been pretty steady, Eddie. He is in line for a bounce-back week. So, yeah, I could see Carson having a big day if they get a lead there. Uh, but, you know, uh, he's he's still not at my top top of my list. I like Le'Veon more than him, actually. Le'Veon is right below him, 6,900. I just think Le'Veon's going to get more volume. Uh, I feel like Le'Veon's more involved in the pass game. Uh, even though Le'Veon has a lot less rushing attempts, he just feels like a more integral part of that offense than Chris Carson is for Seattle, where Russell Wilson's kind of running the show. So the numbers actually disagree with me wholeheartedly. But uh, I think Lev Bell turns it up this week against the Jacksonville team. Just a hunch, but I do believe it's going to happen. Nick Chubb I like a lot, but not this week. I don't play anybody against New England because... Even if I have a hunch that they're going to do good, New England has just been lights out against everybody. And I feel like the Browns need Chubb to do something this week. I really feel if they're going to have any chance in this game, Chubb's got to step up. That being said, 
I just don't trust him against that defense. So I think 6,600 is way too much for that defense. The David Johnson Chase Edmonds bullshit continues. Johnson is once again a game time decision for this week. Fudge. Now, the one good part is I don't want a whole lot of errors in the offense this week because they're playing in New Orleans against the Saints. They have a rookie quarterback who's not played in an environment like the Dome yet. Um, so, if David Johnson doesn't play, I could see Chase Edmonds getting a bunch of volume. But when you're still factoring in a 6,200 price tag with the amount of volume he's going to get, just not a big fan of it. I just can't get behind it. Um, so, I'm not. I'm fading Johnson and Edmonds this week. I have David Johnson in every one of my regular fantasy leagues and I'm even not I'm just not and I have Edmonds in every I have Edmonds in every one of those leagues too and I'm just not playing either of them I'm actually playing LaShawn McCoy over one of them this week uh, just because I can't take the chance anymore after what happened last week you don't know who's going to be playing and who's not I wish Kingsbury would be a little bit more up front with us but he's choosing not to be so it is what it is um Marlon Mack against Denver. I like Marlon Mack this week. I think he'll have a good week. I think he'll hit pay dirt at least once. Uh, my problem with Marlon Mack, and I say this every single Friday when we talk about him, is he has a complete lack of involvement in the pass game. And that's really disheartening. He's gotten three targets four times this year, zero targets the other two games he's played. His best game is 28. It was the first game of the year where he ran all over the, uh, the Chargers. And since then, hasn't really had a bomb day. So it's tough for me to trust a guy in a PPR format who isn't involved in the pass game. Even though Denver is extremely susceptible to the run, uh, which is why I like Marlon Mack this week. I just don't know if I trust him enough to actually play him. But he's one of them. If he turns in a big performance this week, I wouldn't be like surprised by it. Uh, Derek Henry at home against Tampa Bay. This one is another one I'm on the fence, and it's the same reason. I think it's not funny they put him right by Marlon Mack because my gripe on Henry is exactly the same as my gripe on Mack. He doesn't catch passes, and in a PPR format, you really, really, really want that. So it's really tough to, um, to trust Derrick Henry this week, especially against Tampa Bay that ranks third best in the league against the run. I feel like this is more of a Ryan Tannehill day. I will have at least one lineup with Tannehill in it, partially because Tannehill is so cheap, and two, because that's where Tampa Bay is vulnerable, is to the pass. So um, I think this could be a Tannehill, Corey Davis kind of day. Matter of fact, you know what? I'll, I'll preface what's about to happen. Even though I would like to say that Stafford is going to be my quarterback in most of these things. In this particular play that we're going to do here, I'm going to run. I'm going to run a Tannehill lineup just to see how it looks to have a cheap quarterback this week. Because all the lineups I've done so far have been with a more expensive quarterback, so I kind of want to see how that frees up my budget. Anyway, uh, where are we at? We are at Austin Eckler. I don't know what I think about Austin Eckler. I feel like his value, even if you look at last week, his volume went down a ton. He went from 29, I mean, he went from a, well, never mind. His last, since Gordon came back, his volume has been diminished in terms of rushing attempts. However, he is still extremely involved in the pass game, which is why I like him more than, you know, most backs, uh, just because he catches a lot of passes. However, he doesn't play even the majority of his team snaps anymore. They're also playing against Chicago. Um... Overall, I don't like Eckler. I haven't liked Eckler all this year, and I've been wrong all this year. And I'm going to continue to be wrong if he continues to be a stallion because I still don't like him. Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs is questionable. Gruden says he will probably play against Houston. And that is because the only games the Raiders have won this year are the games where Josh Jacobs has done well. They have lost every game that he hasn't played played well. So um, do I like Jacobs as much as last week when he was only 5,000 against Green Bay? Or two weeks ago, and he gashed them, and I was like, all in on Josh Jacobs? No, I don't. I think he's not going to have as good of a day as that. Particularly, my worry with him is his injury. So I just don't know. Latavius Murray. This all comes down to whether Kamara plays or not. If Kamara is listed as out 
on Sunday, Latavius Murray is once again going to be a great play. Just like I told you, he was going to be a great play last week. He's going to get hell of volume. He's going to get um, hell of volume. And he's going to get hell of volume. So if Kamara is not playing, uh, Latavius Murray is a fine play at 5,800. Um, Philip Lindsay, I, dude, I look at how, look, Kenneth Royce Freeman are two places apart. They're $100 difference. And they're playing against Indy at Indy. I mean, I just can't trust either of these guys, man. I just can't. They're wildly inconsistent. They, This is not a particularly good matchup for them. I just don't trust them. Devonta Freeman at home against Seattle. You know, I do like Devonta Freeman this week. Uh, I like him more if Matt Ryan goes, but I still like him. I think they're going to have to lean on him a little this week, especially if Matt Ryan doesn't go. But I think that will make him key in on him a little bit more. Again, what, what, what's really key in noting about Devonta Freeman's resurgence, uh, he had a bad week last week against the Rams. But um, you look at the weeks before that, and his, his target share has been okay. He's getting past to every single game like clockwork. Um, and he's, uh, you know, he's been running the ball okay. I, I just feel like this is a good matchup and one where they're going to have to lean on him. Uh, but I'm still not going all in on Freeman or anything like that. He's just a play I like a little bit. Just talked about Royce Freeman, not a big fan of any uh, running back, really of any player in Denver's system other than Sutton at this point. Sutton's value just went pew through the roof with Emmanuel Sanders leaving. Sutton is clearly the number one target in Denver now, and therefore I think Sutton has a lot of uh, value. But we'll get to that in a second. Melvin Gordon, I, you know, you can't, there's nothing you're going to tell me that's going to get me to like Austin Eckler more than Melvin Gordon. I think Melvin Gordon is the superior back of the two by a lot. And uh, Chicago is very susceptible to the run, as we've seen the last few weeks. Excuse me. Chicago has been gashed by the last few of um, Running backs they played. Latavius Murray took him to the freaking house last week. Uh, and Josh Jacobs took him to the house before that. So uh, I actually like Melvin Gordon this week. I wish he was getting a little bit more volume than he is because Eckler's cutting into it a lot, particularly in the passing department. But, um, you know, this could be Melvin Gordon's coming out party. I don't know. Still don't like him a ton, but I do like him more than Eckler, who's – Ranked significantly above him. Sony Michelle. I was in on Michelle last week, if you remember correctly. I loved Sony Michelle last week. And this is coming from a guy who does not like the Patriots running situation at all. Uh, the only time, here's what you need to know about Sony Michelle. And this is this is what I knew going into last week. Sony Michelle is going to have a big day whenever the Patriots are playing an opponent that they have absolutely no chance of losing to. A lot of people would put Cleveland in that category. However, Cleveland possesses offensive weapons that other teams that they've played don't. So I don't think they can take their foot off the gas. And not to mention, if you look at Sony Michelle's touchdown runs, which he had four of, I believe, or three, uh, three of, excuse me, last week, he had three touchdowns and still only 22 points. He only had 42 yards. I think all of his touchdowns, or two of them for sure, were from one yard out. So I don't think they get put on the one-yard line four times this week. I just I just can't. So, no, I'm fading Sony Michelle. James White, however, I do like. I think James White, because he's involved in the pass game, is a lot more of a uh, – and because of the – really, because of the – I mean, look at that. That's just consistency. The dude hasn't scored less than 10 or more than 13 at all this year. He only has one touchdown in his lowest scoring game of the year, in fact, against Miami. Um, he's a guy who uh, I just believe in this week. Don't ask me why. I just It feels like a James White's kind of coming out due date. I'm actually going to put James White in my lineup if that tells you how I feel about him this week. Even though I hate the Patriots running situation. I just, I just, my, my gut's just telling me this is a James White kind of week. So uh, I, I think they're going to toss it to him quite a bit and, and, and handle up. Tevin Coleman, San Francisco. He's actually rising. His stock is rising on my radar. Um, 
he, he's getting a lot of his team snaps. They've gotten away from that four-headed rushing attack, and now it's kind of just Tevin Coleman, Matt Breda with a little Raheem Mostert. Uh, you're not seeing too much of Jeff Wilson Jr. anymore. So, you know, I think if you wanted to play Tevin Coleman at his 5000 price tag, I think it's fair. Uh, it's not anything I'm going to do on this particular lineup, but I think it's fair. Same can be said for Ty Johnson at 4900 This is where uh, I believe... Uh, KC must not play. Okay. KC must play on Monday night or Sunday night because uh, I, I was looking for Deshaun McCoy on this list. I like McCoy this week. He's not going to be on this list because he plays in one of the games I'm not talking about. But just so you know, I do like Deshaun McCoy this week, especially and particularly if Patrick Mahomes does not play, which it looks right now like Mahomes is not going to play. So just keep that in mind. McCoy is a good play. Uh, but anyway, back to what I was talking about. Ty Johnson. Okay, so now that carry on Johnson's out, Ty Johnson is becoming their lead back. Anytime you can get a lead high volume back for 4,900, you should typically jump on it. I believe in the lineups I've already set for this week. I already have Ty Johnson on a few of them. My problem is that I like Stafford so much this week, and I like Galladay so much this week. It's tough for me. I'm never going to be in a double stack like that. But on the lineups, on some of the lineups where I don't have Stafford or Galladay, I'm definitely going to run Ty Johnson because it's just too cheap. 4,900 is just amazing value. For for a uh, for quote unquote head back, so we'll see if it's his coming out party this week when he gets a full workload or how that goes. It's worth monitoring for sure, and it is worth for me putting in a flyer on him and at least a few lineups to see if Ty Johnson does what he's supposed to do. Matt Breda, Matt Breda is now becoming fantasy irrelevant because Tevin Coleman is getting so much work. Uh, he you know Breda's last big game was because he broke off a few big plays. He's not getting the volume anymore, and therefore I don't trust him. Tariq Cohen, Tariq Cohen is not a good play this year. Wayne Gallman is not a good play this year. They're being very disrespectful to Carlos Hyde, I think. Uh, Carlos Hyde hasn't really had but one good game this year against the Chiefs. Um, but he's at least getting pretty good volume. He's getting, like how they put Wayne Gallman ahead of Carlos Hyde, I don't know. Hyde's getting so much more volume than Gallman, especially now that you know, Saquon's back. So this just seems like a slight oversight on DraftKings' part. Um, <clears throat> Mixon at 4,600 is also arguably a deal. You never know when he's just going to decide to turn up and show up. Thing is, his best game of the year right now is 17 points. Other than that, he's been under 10 most of the year. Mixon's super talented, however... Uh, you know, and 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 don't, I like his forty six hundred price tag. So if you're digging real deep for for a running back this week, you could go Joe Mixon. The problem is, you know, uh, he plays for Cincinnati. They're going to be playing from behind. They like to throw to Gio Bernard more than uh, Joe Mixon anyway. So it's it's pretty uh pretty tough to trust Mixon this week. Yeah, pretty pretty tough. But of of the cheap. Backs, he seems okay. Uh, did I pass up Frank Gore? Where's Frank Gore? Okay, this is confusing for me because the next guy on my list is what well, has Armstead, who's the backup for Jacksonville, which I also find incredibly weird. And then you got Singletary. Singletary, how did they have him so much higher than Gore? That just doesn't doesn't make any sense because Gore has been the guy they've been giving the. I don't like it. I don't like it. Montgomery against uh, the Chargers. I actually could see this being a David Montgomery day. Um, I could see Montgomery having a good day this week. Just call it a hunch. I can see that. Other than that, I don't like any guys below that. Though, if you really want to take a flyer on Frank Gore, just to volume, I guess you can. But realistically speaking, Joe Mixon is probably as low as I'd go, and I really don't want to play him. So it's going to be like my best values there are going to be like Ty Johnson and James White. Uh, I'm going to fill in my second running back when I kind of see how my budget is, but I hope it's a more expensive one. As a matter of fact, if I could, I, I'm going to put Gurley in there right now. Um, <clears throat> next. Okay, so um, – DeAndre Hopkins at home against Oakland. I love D-Hop this week. I, I told you last week I liked D-Hop last week. 
he was due to start making a comeback, and uh, and he did. You know, he, he couldn't stay that quiet for that long with his talent. Will Fuller's also out now, so they're going to be relying on him even more. Do I like D-Hop? Yeah, I like D-Hop a lot this week. Michael Thomas. You know, he seems to be doing okay, whether it's Bridgewater or Breeze. So I like Michael Thomas this week. My only issue with Michael Thomas is that um, his price tag, man, it's the same as D-Hop. They're just very expensive players, and they really have to turn huge value over the much cheaper guys to 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 pay pay off paying that much for them. Same thing with Julio Jones. He's playing against a very good Seattle <clears throat> defense at home. Um, Atlanta's at home, I mean. But <clears throat> problem with Julio this week is you don't know if Matt Ryan's 100%. Matt Ryan's not 100%. Julio's not going to do Julio things. Cooper Cup. Wow, man. I actually really like Cup this week, but it bothers me that they have him priced this high. He's, he plays less snaps than Cook's. And Woods, he plays the third fewest, you know, he plays the third most snaps of receivers on that team. So he actually gets out snapped by both Cooks and Woods. Uh, I do like the fact he's in the slot, which since he usually doesn't cover well, they normally cover outside receivers better. So I like Cup this week. I won't play him on this lineup because obviously I have Todd Gurley in it. Uh, and I don't like his price tag particularly a lot at, at 7500 I think he's way overpriced. So I feel like they're super high on Cup, uh, but uh, and I guess I am too. But I just I just don't know. Godwin, holy shit! Where did this guy come from? Um, I don't like Godwin this week. I'm just gonna say it. This feels like more of a Mike Evans week. Uh, I don't I don't really like. I just don't get it. I, I honestly just don't get it. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get Chris Godwin. He's an anomaly. He's a number two receiver who's become a number one receiver, I guess. I mean, you can't argue that he's become a number one receiver in the last three weeks. For me, it just feels like it's only a matter of time before he falls back down to earth. He's had three huge weeks in a row. I would never bet on it being four in a row because, I mean, we have no reason to believe he's going to be able to keep this pace up. Like, no way, especially with – you know, other mouths to feed in that offense and against a very good Tennessee defense. So, no, I, I hate Godwin this week for his price tag. It's just too expensive for, for what he's going to bring. Tyler Lockett, however, I like a lot. I think Tyler Lockett will catch at least one touchdown pass from Russell Wilson this week. Um, unfortunately, I just don't like his price tag either at 7000 Just Just a little, little pricey for me for a guy who only gets four or five targets most weeks. Uh, now, don't get me wrong, Tyler Lockett does a lot with those targets. He's kind of like a Tyree Kill type. Uh, but look, I mean, his target share for the year, it started out really good, 12 and 14, and then 4, 4, 5, 7. So he just doesn't get a, just a ton of looks the way he was. Uh, and then that's going to cap his upside, to be honest. Even in a game where I think he has a lot of potential, just his lack of volume is going to cap his upside. So buyer beware on Tyler Lockett. Though I do like him this week. I think he's good for at least 15 points. I just don't, until he has a week where he scores 30 points, I can't trust him. To try to win. Excuse me. To try to win a drafting contest. Um, Julian Edelman. I like Edelman this week. I don't like Edelman's price tag this week. And I already have James White on this lineup, so obviously I would never pick Edelman here. But I, I think this is going to be a James White or Julian Edelman kind of day. Um, I'm not really worried about Edelman's injury. I'm just worried about his price tag, man. Just worried about his price tag. But this does feel like a good opportunity for Edelman. Mike Evans. I don't see how they have Godwin so much more expensive. I mean, he's only 500 more, but Evans is the better of those two receivers. I don't care what anybody tells me. Evans is better than Godwin. So I don't really understand their pricing here, but, you know, whatever. Um, I don't like Evans this week for the same reason I don't like Godwin this week. I think Jameis Winston has a very volatile day ahead of him against a pretty good Tennessee defense. Tennessee's at home. Um, I don't really trust the Tampa Bay offense, so it's, trust, it's hard for me to trust any of their players. Odell Beckham. Well, I mean, based on the reports we saw this week about what Belichick tells Beckham every game they play, it's tough to get behind Beckham. I haven't been behind Beckham all year anyway. 
And why would I start whenever he's playing the Patriots? That's just silly. Patriots literally on a historic pace right now as far as defenses go. So don't sleep on the Patriots. And whoever's playing the Patriots, you probably don't want to play them. Just flat out. You probably don't. Could they go off? Sure. But it's not likely. Keenan Allen at Chicago. Um, he's a game time decision, which I don't like. He hasn't had more than 10 points in any of his last four games after a bomb ass start to the season. Uh, and especially in Chicago, in Chicago, I can't trust Keenan Allen. One guy I can trust and do trust this week is Kenny Galladay. <laughs> If you noticed last week, I was pretty high on Marvin Jones. Uh, there was a reason for that. And uh, there's a reason I like Galladay this week instead of Marvin Jones. And that's because Galladay just has the build, better build and better frame for this particular matchup. I think he's going to have a huge day against Detroit. Uh, I mean, against New, New York. And, um, yeah, I'm, 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 I think I got Galladay on more lineups than anyone else this week. So, knock on wood. Let's hope it works out. He's 6400 which I think is a fair and accurate price for him. It's about where he should be. And uh, I definitely think he could turn in some big numbers this week. Will Fuller's out. Uh, Robert Woods for 6300 That's just absurd. Though I do think Woods could have a good day, same as Cooper Cup. It's just tough to – with the Rams, you just never know which one of them is going to get the work unless it's a matchup. Uh, hmm. That really fits into one of their styles. This particular matchup probably is going to be a Robert Woods or Cooper Cup day before Brandon Cook's day. But uh, I think Gurley's going to do the work. So that's just me. But, uh, you know, Woods, I'm not ruling it out of their own possibility. He has a pretty good day. Fuller's out. T.Y. Hilton, the guy I was all in on last week, he did me okay last week, considering I had him on, a, oh, I believe, every single lineup I played which is always dangerous when you're playing a bunch of lineups, especially like me where I play a bunch of single entry lineups. It's really tough and dangerous to have one guy in all your lineups that you're that confident on. And uh, it worked out last week. I mean, he put up 19, which was fine. This week he draws Denver. I think Denver is going to key in on him. They have a good pass defense. Therefore, I do not like T.Y. Hilton, though it would not be out of the realm of possibility, obviously, for him to hit pay dirt again. Allen Robinson at home against the Chargers. He's going to be facing down Casey Hayward, who's a pretty good cornerback. That being said, I love Allen Robinson's volume and Mitch Trubisky's trust in him. I do like Allen Robinson as a, to as a whole because of the uh, amount of volume he's getting, but uh, he's not one of my favorite plays this week, but he is kind of in the middle. I can see a reasonable, you know, it's reasonable to play him. Chark against the Jets. I feel like DJ Chark's going to get pay dirt this week. He's going to score a touchdown. Uh, he's kind of due. I, I, I can also see this being a Fournette kind of day. But Chark's had really good chemistry with Minshew. Um, and I think he has an okay day this week. I don't, again, I think I wish he was a little cheaper. If he was closer to the 5,500 to 5,000 range, I think he'd be a lot more of a slam dunk play. But because I like the guy right below him so much more, who's cheaper, I'm going to ban that one. It's John Brown. John Brown against Philly. I love John Brown this week. And he he, he and Galladay are probably going to be my two most played players um, on all my lineups. Uh, I'm going to try to get a few without them in it just because. But um, I really just love both these guys this week. I think they're both going to have amazing days. Philly's very vulnerable to the deep ball and speedsters. And that's what John Brown is. And Josh Allen can throw the ball fucking miles like Uncle Rico. So, um, John Brown, definitely, definitely a good play this week, in my opinion. Marvin Jones, look at this. They jacked up his price after that big game last week. Uh, you know, Marvin Jones, one thing that's interesting to note about him that a lot of people don't realize is he just plays a lot of that. Him and Galladay both play a ton of snaps on that team. And when you play that many snaps, you're going to get volume. Uh, my thing is, after a four-touchdown performance last week, very, 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 when you look at his history of games, just so tough to trust Marvin Jones week to week. And this week, I don't trust him. Last week, I did. This week, I don't. Golden Tate um, at Detroit. This is another guy that just... 
I just don't know. Like, based on what we've seen since he's been in the lineup, it looks pretty promising. He's gotten 11 and 9 targets in the last two games. This is something you should look for in a receiver. I could see Golden Tate having an okay day. I just... Ugh. Excuse me. The Giants' offense is just kind of a mess, and they have a lot of mouths to feed. You got Sterling Shepard, um, who's out again. Interesting. Even though Evan Ingram really screwed me last week. Um, so, yeah, I, I think they're going to have not much of an option but to go to Golden Tate this week. So, yeah, I think I can get behind Golden Tate this week. Um, Brandon Cooks, nope. Cincinnati covers outside receivers too well. Calvin Ridley. I love Calvin Ridley if Matt and Ryan plays because they just got rid of Muhammad Sanu. Calvin Ridley is now going to see a whole share of snaps he wasn't seeing before. And if Matt Ryan's in the game, I very, 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 very much like Calvin Ridley this week. He is going to be on some of my lineups. Not this one yet because I know who the last receiver I'm picking on this lineup is. Um, we'll get to that in a second. Tyrell Williams. Um, he's questionable. Uh, he's questionable. They, they, the latest report today says he's going to play. So, um, and against Houston, I could actually see Tyrell Williams doing okay this week. I, I he's, he's going to show up on a few of my lineups too. Uh, Shepard's out. Larry Fitzgerald's just letting me down every time I pick him. Every week I'm in on him, he seems to let me down. Just like last week in a brilliant matchup they had against the Giants. 2.2 points. Fuck you, Larry Fitzgerald. Um, matter of fact, he hasn't had... Uh... The hell was that? How did that pop up? I don't know where the fuck that came from. Anyway, uh, he hasn't had... Uh... a lot of volume, and that's the problem. So, yeah, I don't trust Fitzgerald. Gordon IR, Deshaun Jackson's out again. Cortland Sutton, 5,300. Probably my value pick of the week. Love Cortland Sutton. Still not moving him into this lineup, but he's Cortland Sutton's on a ton of my lineups this week as well. Um, so, yeah, I like Sutton a lot this week. He's their only target there. He's going to get tons of volume there. Cortland Sutton is a very, very good play. I might actually switch him and get Galladay out of one of my lineups here and put Sutton in instead. I don't know. Or I might... I think I'm going to take Sutton. And then for my flex, I'm just going to... Hold on, I'm going to get to what I'm talking about in a second, but... Uh, where are you at, man? You're super cheap, aren't you? Yeah, 4,400. Sign me up. Anyway, get to that guy in a second. So we were at Sutton at 5,300. Alshon Jeffrey, 5,200. I, I think Alshon has a chance of finding Pater this week. But with him and on that offense lately, they haven't been clicking. They've kind of been uh, at each other's throats, kind of. So I'm not really sure what the heck's going on with that. Um, so, yeah. Tyler Boyd's been letting me down. They're playing against the Rams. I don't think Dalton's going to have a lot of time to throw, so I'm not a big fan of Tyler Boyd. DK Metcalf. Uh, now we're getting to the receivers I'm not a fan of. Uh, I don't really – I don't like DK Metcalf at all. Uh, I maybe need to look at him a little bit and consider because, yeah, I mean, got nine. he's getting all Lockett's targets, uh, but he hasn't had a game above 15 this year. Tough to trust a guy like that to get you a win. Robbie Anderson with no Jalen Ramsey. You know, I love that hair, man. I could see Robbie Anderson possibly, possibly uh, making stuff happen this week, and he's forty nine hundred. So he, I think he's a good value for his price tag and his potential. He can at least get you a thirty point game if he has a good game. Not a fan of more Crowder. I don't trust till I see Sam Darnold throw the ball seventeen times like he did week one. Kenny Stills actually could have a good day because uh, Will Fuller's out. So, I definitely think uh, Stills' volume is really good, and 
for forty seven hundred. You know, there, there, you know, there's more cheap receiver plays than I actually thought this week because I think Stills is an okay player. Don't trust Christian Kirk. Don't tr- trust, trust Curtis Samuel. I think Emmanuel Sanders, if he actually is going, yeah, I like Sanders this week a lot. So yeah, I do. Throwing that out there, uh, and he's only forty six hundred. And he could revolutionize that San Francisco offense. I would not be surprised if they immediately tried to get him into the end zone and into the fold. So this is another week where I like Sanders. I like man, I do actually it's making me feel better about taking some of these cheaper rece- I'm gonna have a lineup where I can get a few good running backs because you know it's tougher to find the good running backs than it is the the good receivers. And I really, really think that um, Sanders could have a very good week based on his price tag. Uh, Goodwin, not a big fan of. Pascal, not a big fan of. Beasley, none of these guys are going to win you your stuff. Okay, that's as low as I want to go uh, on, on receivers because there's just nothing really worth looking at below that. Other than, oh, I'm sorry, Corey Davis, who I actually have in my lineup. Corey Davis at 4,400. If I'm going to play Ryan Tannehill this week as my quarterback on this particular lineup, going to play Corey Davis. He, that's his guy. That's his go-to guy. It's the guy he trusts. That's the guy uh, he's going to make fellow fantasy relevant as long as he's quarterback. So, yes, I like Corey Davis whenever, you know, whenever Ryan Tannehill's in there. I, I don't see how you couldn't. So, of course, I like Corey Davis. Um, yeah. Tight ends. I actually have quite a bit of a budget to work with here, which makes me happy. Um, Kittle, Waller, Hooper, Ingram. I like the four top tight ends. I like Henry and Everett. They all have good, solid matchups. Not, I can't get behind Ertz. Buffalo's very good against the pass uh, to the tight end, and they also have Dallas Goddard, who seems to be cutting into Ertz's workload a little. So for me... Uh, tight end is a spot where there's not a lot of cheap value this week. The cheapest tight end I would personally go for is Gerald Everett at 4,300. So um, we're definitely looking between Kittle, Waller, Hooper, and Ingram. Based on what I have right here, I'm going to take Ingram. Wow, I got a lot of money to spend still. That's cool. We'll make we'll we'll make something happen with that. Um, man. I guess I could just go Kittle. I'll take Kittle on this lineup because I like Kittle and I uh, I like Kittle. Even though I think Sanders might have a good week this week, I like Kittle a lot. I think his, his opportunity is going to be there. And because I don't get to play him a lot because I tend to look for cheaper tight ends and most of my other lineups are going to have a cheaper tight end, I'll get Kittle in this one. I think he's got a great matchup. But as long as you're going between – Kittle, Waller, Hooper, Ingram, Henry, and Everett. 